Hi, welcome back to Making the Canberra Dress. In this video, I am going to be adding our gang gang feathers, which are going to be made of tulle onto the skirt. So the first thing I've done, I've been sort of playing around with patterns for a little while of how to do this, and I think I've got one that I'm happy with now. So the first thing I've done is just gone around and I've marked at one and a half and two and a half inches above my cut hem. Then I've measured the circumference of this line and I've divided it by the number of um, feathers that I want. So that gives me the width that each one needs to be at the top so I can get an exact size going around so I don't end up with like a half or quarter or a big overlap somewhere. I want them to look nice and even. So the circumference of the whole skirt at that two and a half inch line was 200 centimetres. Um, sorry, I keep switching between inches and centimetres. I do this all the time. Sorry for that, it's confusing. And um, yeah, I did centimetres just because it's easier to divide. So I've divided my 200 centimetres by 11 panels, which means each of the um, little feathers, the tulle feathers, needs to be 18.2 centimetres across the top so that I can get a nice even number of them around the bottom of the skirt. After playing around with a few different ideas of how to do these, this is the pattern that I've decided I'm going to use. So I've cut two, uh, the longer one will be cut from white tulle and the shorter one will be cut from grey tulle. And then when they put on these side bits are just going to gather a little bit just to give it a little bit of a curve. But I've just measured across the top and I've made sure that with the overlap between panels this distance here is 18.2 centimetres. So each little tulle feather is going to be made up for this layer of one layer of white tulle and two layers of grey tulle. The grey just got a little bit lost when I did a single layer when I was doing some experiments. So I'm going to cut 11 white pieces of tulle in this shape and 22 pieces of grey tulle in this shape. I'm going to lay all three pieces together. So I've got a couple here that I was experimenting with that aren't, they're not quite right, but I can show you how I'm going to do this. So I'm going to lay, I've got my white tulle layer and then my two layers of grey tulle. And then I'm going to overlap the layers like this and pin them together making sure that that gap there is my 18.2 centimetres and I'm going to do that so I've got a full circle and then I can pin them onto the skirt and stitch each one and gather it up that second line one inch below the circumference is where I'm going to gather it to so this will end up an inch wide gathered onto the skirt so I'm going to cut my tool pin it into a big circle with the right amount of overlap and then pin it onto the skirt at that line that I've just drawn so I'm, I've started selling this soft tool on my website. It's really pretty. I've got a few colours and I'll get some more if I know it's going to be popular. It's got a slight stretch to it one way as well, so it's really nice for sleeves. If you want to do a tight sleeve, it's just got that stretch to it. It's nice and strong. It doesn't tear like some of the other tools, like the really wide tool that I use a lot tears quite easily, unfortunately. Yeah, it's pretty strong and it comes in some amazing colours. So I've bought a few colours to start with. Um, if they go well, then um, I'll get some more colours in and add them. Um, yeah, it's really lovely. I'm really happy with it. I found a supplier who does some really, really good, um, yeah, really good colours. There's so many to choose from. I'm going to try and pick colours that aren't available that you can't normally find. Like I've got a really lovely red, like a lovely cherry red. Most red tools that quite orangey colour. Um, I've got black, I've got ivory, I've got some blush pink as well. Yeah, and like I say, I'll put whatever of the um, the greys left after I've done this as well because it's a really pretty grey. So this is how my first row of feathers, tulle feathers, looks pinned onto the dress. So all I'm going to do now, using a clear thread, is gather up each join. And I'm gathering both sides at the same time because I've overlapped them. I'm just going to knot the thread at the bottom. And then gather up through all of the layers and then pull it tight and knot it. And then I'm just going to go back through down to the bottom of the gathers. And I'm just going to stitch it in place so it stays where I want it. And then stitch it onto the 
I'm stitching through the skirt fabric this time as well to hold it in place. And that's our first sort of little gathered drape done. And once I do that, that's going to create the lovely feather shapes that we want. So I'm going to stitch up each gather and stitch along the top to hold them in place as well so this part doesn't drop down. I'm going to do that around the whole row of these little tulle feathers. So here's the first row all gathered and stitched into place. Next I've measured two and a half inches above that and then I've divided my circumference by the 11 um, panels that we're doing again. Um, this time each panel needs to be one centimetre narrower and I'm also going to make it one centimetre shorter. Then as I go up the skirt, I'm going to gradually reduce the size of each of the little feathers that we're making. And I'm also going to reduce the gap between each row. So as they get smaller, they'll get closer together. So I've got my first three rows on, which has given me this nice like fullness and puffiness at the bottom that I want. Going up, I want the feathers to be a little bit smoother. So I've changed the shape that I'm cutting the feathers to this. So I've got two layers of white and two layers of grey tulle. And that's just going to give me that nice curve when that's pulled straight. It's still going to have a little bit of fullness at the bottom, but I want it to sit a lot flatter coming up over this curve of the dress. So I'm going to keep going again, getting progressively smaller and the rows are getting progressively closer until I get up to nearly at the waist. So this is the skirt with all of the layers of the petals on. So you can see how I created the more 3D effect at the bottom with the layers that were gathered. And then I moved to the flatter petals as it went up and it's given this beautiful round shape. Um, especially with the layers of the petticoat we've got underneath as well. So it's given a really good shape. I'm really happy with that. Then for the last layer of petals, I didn't want a solid line where this stopped. So with the two layers of the grey, I've actually cut them longer than the white. And I've cut one longer than the other. So it just fades up onto the blue. And then once we start adding flowers on, even if we see little bits of this in between, it's not going to be as obvious as a full sort of solid line there. It's going to help it fade a little bit. So my client's just been for a fitting to check that she was happy with all of these. Um, we also tried it on and checked that the zip was in the right place. It looks baggy on here, but that's because the corset lace is a bit tighter on the mannequin than it does on her. So this is all fine. The blue layer sits really smoothly actually over it, which I'm really happy with. So the next thing I need to do is join my outside layer and my lining together. So I'm going to um, unpin this from the corset layer. Join the blue layer and my lining layer together, right sides together around the top, under stitch, and then I need to hem it. And I'm going to do my usual bag hem. So. You've seen how I do that loads of times and I've left enough room. I've left enough room between the bottoms of the gathers that I can bag hem the um, dress and the lining together. So I will go and do that. So join all the layers, hem it and join inside the uh, inside of the zip. And then I'll show you how I'm going to join it onto the corset layer. So both my layers are now joined. So it, look, it just looks like a nice little dress on its own. So we've got it lined. So it's joined at the top and I've understitched it. I've hand stitched down the inside of the zip. I've pressed around the top and then I've done a bag hem. So I can find the way in under all these tulle feathers. So we've got a nice bag hem at the bottom that I've pressed, which is keeping everything really neat and tidy inside. So basically I've made a dress, a finished dress, but because it needs the corset layer inside, I'm now gonna join the two layers together. So all I'm going to do is unzip it. Now because I cut the two patterns, remember the corset pattern and the dress pattern um, were slightly different lengths. So the dress pattern had the extra seam allowance at the top for finishing it off and so that it sits just higher than the corset. So I'm just going to go around and I'm just going to match up my seams and pin it so the dress is sitting a few mil higher than the corset layer. If I've cut this accurately, this should sit really smoothly over the corset. And you can see once that's pulled tight with the bust, it is sitting really nicely. So doing it this way gives a much cleaner, thinner join at the top. So when I've done corseted dresses in videos in the past, I've left the top of the corset unfinished 
left the top of the dress unfinished and then join them right sides together so both layers become one so doing it this way just gives a a less bulky seam at the top and that bias binding of the course it's actually hidden nicely inside so it's just another way to do it there's all sorts of different ways you can join layers together and um, for this one as well because I'm going to be stitching so many embellishments on it it's going to hold both layers together as well let me just zip it up so that's how my layers look pinned together I was really careful about stay stitching all of these curved edges while I was working on the um, dress so that it didn't stretch out at all and you can see if anything it's just curving slightly in over the top of the corset at the bust there and it's sitting yeah, it's sitting really smoothly the top layer is a little bit loose on here because the corset's pulled a bit tighter than it will be on my client but I'm really happy yeah with how smoothly that's sitting and I think yeah once it's got her body inside it that's going to sit really nicely so next what I'm going to do I'm going to put a few really big stitches on all the seams through both layers to hold it together and then I'm just going to tack around the top to hold it where I've got pins um, and I'll take that tacking out as I sew flowers onto it because that's going to hold it together and when I sew, um, stitch the big arm sort of loops on so that's the front and that's the back you can see the corset there that's because it's yeah it's too close together here so once that's open a little bit more that will sit a little bit higher and will hide the corset really nicely um, I bought a white zip because I was using white fabric I should have bought a blue zip because now the top of the dress is blue you're not seeing the white bit because it's underneath all my um, feathers but, but that's definitely something I need to keep in mind for future designs beautiful so I'm gonna yeah just hand stitch these layers at the seams tack around the top stopping here because this part doesn't need to join any further back than that because that will just sit over it naturally so I'm going to stop all by stitching just past that side back seam or at the side back seam so once I've sewn them together that's our dress construction done so in the next video I'm going to show you how I'm going to make the big and um, boned shoulder loops that the flowers are going to be attached to and we'll start embellishing and this mannequin's really low and I'm bending over really funny because it won't stay up anymore there's something wrong with the um the mechanism that lifts it so, yeah it just drops down there's something wrong with it and it just drops down to its lowest um lowest height it won't stay up anymore I need to look at that or maybe change it over with one of my older mannequins because I love love the body part of this one but I'll do that at some point so that's it for this video yeah in the next video we will start um with the shoulder pieces and sewing flowers on thanks for watching see you next time